Guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about something that every business needs, a high converting landing page. Now, usually we put a lot of focus on the visuals. If you actually look at Twitter, like everyone's playing around with visuals, but very few people are actually talking about what it means to actually have a really high converting landing page. A lot of less people actually focus on conversions. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what it means to have a high converting structure for a landing page and what that usually includes. <clears throat> Now, whether that's for, let's say, signups, demos, purchases, or any other key, key goal, I'll be using this visual that I just created as an example of uh, which combines proven global strategies and also ensures that your landing page delivers big results. So let's dive into it. Obviously, the first important component that we have is the header. In the header, you naturally would want your logo and some of the most important links that you expect people to visit. These can include features, pricing, solutions, your contact and obviously the CTA. The CTA is very important and it is also very important to actually have the header fixed uh, for the most part in all websites or I guess like all landing pages because when you're scrolling, the CTA uh, and some of the important links may actually not be visible. So a person would need to navigate to any of those other sections or even click on the CTA, but they wouldn't be able to. Um, the CTA or sorry, the header can actually have the links as drop downs as well if you have a lot of features or if you have a lot of solutions and stuff along those lines. So yeah, definitely do that. Well, the first section that we have in front of us is the hero section. Now your hero section is where the first impression happens. So global data shows that you actually just have a few seconds, maybe even five seconds to grab a user's attention. And here's how we actually do it right. The first and most important thing is the headline. Now your headline needs to be very clear. It needs to be benefits driven or it can be removing a pain from the user as well. Think of it as a hook. So instead of just saying, okay, this is the best project management tool or this is the best CRM tool, actually highlight either the benefit or the prevention of a loss that the user may have. Like for example, you can say, organize your sales pipeline in half the time. So obviously that talks about like how this particular tool can be used to organize your sales pipeline and it can actually help you do that in half the time of some of the other competitors. The subheadline is obviously the next most important thing which talks about, actually it's not the next most, it is also like relatively important, but you can expand on that particular promise that you actually gave above and talk about how, like how saving save 10 plus hours weekly with automation and AI driven insights or something along those lines that basically expands as to how you're actually going to do that. Next, we have the call to action. Obviously you need to, you need a bold, a very visible and eye catchy call to action. A lot of people, especially in the Twitter space and some designs are actually doing really subtle call to animation or call to actions, sorry, and sometimes the button is even, isn't even that visible. Sometimes it's placed completely at the bottom or whatever it is. But what you will actually see is if the button is very hard to recognize or the text is ambiguous or it's not in the correct position, it actually affects your uh, conversion metrics or conversion <clears throat> results. So definitely go ahead and actually keep it bold even if it doesn't look as beautiful or as unique or aesthetic. Like your purpose here when you're creating a website is not to have praises from, let's say, the design folks at Twitter or Dribbble or Behance. It's more about making sure that your clients or your users actually hit the mark and convert, obviously. So obviously your CTA can be something like start your free trial or it can be get started or you can obviously have a demo link at the side as well. And the next most important thing after the headline, in my opinion, and the CTA is obviously a visual of your actual uh application or product. Now this can be a screenshot of your product. It can be an animation of your product. It can even be a video. I personally think a video actually is not as helpful as a straight up animation or a screenshot sometimes, especially if you actually have to click to it to load it. I think a good animation is actually, let's say just, or a visual is just either a screenshot, which is slightly animating, actually highlights some of the key points of that particular thing, or even just a visual. I think that's fine. And that actually helps with the loading experience as well, or with the load speeds. This basically just helps users immediately get acquainted as to what they're actually looking at and what we're offering. The second point I wanna talk about is social proof. Now you need to use social proof to build your trust right off the bat. Social proof is crucial. I mean, users need to know that you're credible. How are they gonna know that? 
Did you actually know that about like 88% of customers trust user reviews and logos over your own messaging? And that's just a stat that I actually got from ChatGPT, but I'm sure it probably has stats for that. So you need to add recognizable brands that you worked with. For example, so you can add your most recognizable logos at the top. The purpose isn't here to actually have 20 or 50 different logos. I actually have an example of Slack as well. Slack just uses, I think, selectively four or five logos at the top. And obviously Slack has tons of customers, but it's fine to highlight some of the top customers and leave all of the other ones as well, because we don't really, again, want the users to keep on looking at them. We also can actually highlight, for example, something like, okay, uh, trusted by over 5,000 plus organizations or something along those lines. And you can highlight some of those organizations that are actually some of the most important ones. You can even actually highlight awards or recognitions if you want something. Like for example, a lot of people actually do something in their hero sections where they highlight uh, number one on product hunt or something along those lines are featured on product hunt. I think something like that is really nice to actually show that a lot of credible people are actually backing you up as well. But that's not going to be in the social proofs section. That's actually going to be in the hero section. The other thing that I want to talk about is sometimes this these logos, especially if they are not too many, can actually be placed in the hero section itself if you actually want to highlight really important logos. Like for example, if I have an application and it's used by, let's say, folks at Apple, folks at, let's say, NASA, folks at, let's say, I don't know, um, Samsung or Facebook or whatever, then definitely placing the logos at the top can even be better. And it's gonna not going to take a lot of space, obviously, and then you can have the visual beneath it. The other section that I want to talk, talk about is the highlight uh, highlight section or your features section. But what you need to do is you need to highlight these features as benefits. Because if you just talk about like, let's say something like uh, a feature, let's say allows you to upload PDFs or something along those, obviously that's not going to be sufficient, right? Many landing pages actually make the mistake of just listing out features of their product without actually explaining why they matter. So let's just fix that. Now imagine you need to go ahead and actually structure each feature as a problem and a solution. Now instead of saying AI automation, you're going to say save 10 plus hours weekly with AI powered task management or something. Um, and very really similarly, you're going to go ahead and do that for all of the uh, benefits that you have or the problem and the solution that you have. You can obviously use visuals to highlight that. I would prefer not to have icons or images that are completely irrelevant. If you're talking about how AI is actually helping you solve a bunch of hours in your application, then definitely have an image of AI in your application doing something like that or in the process of doing something like that. Very similarly, I think it's going to be really valuable if you can, if you actually have social proof for those as well. Like for example, you highlighted how it actually helps save 10 plus hours weekly or something along those lines. And then you have an example of how there was a 23% decrease in uh, sales management or something along those lines or task management when Slack was using this particular application as an example. So that's going to be really beneficial when you're highlighting a feature. Not only is it a uh, problem and solution based, but it also gives social proof along with that problem and solution to even further highlight it. <clears throat> And you can actually have a stats section as well. The stats can highlight the number of users or companies using your actual application. For example, the increase in conversion rate or something along those lines, the amount of money people are saving every week, uh, the amount of time people are saving, let's say every month or something along those lines. Basically, the stats section can go anywhere on the page, but ideally above pricing because we want people to uh, we want to convince them before they actually reach the pricing section about all of these things. So that can definitely be there as well. And this is a good section. It's not necessary again, but if you actually have a lot more stats to show, this can be a really good section as well. Then we have a case studies section. One thing on the problem and the solution and the highlights and the benefits and stuff along those lines, I really don't try to have too many. Five is probably max. Three is a good number. Uh, but obviously these can be presented in a much different manner as well. If you have a lot more, you can probably use a bento grid. But the one thing that I don't like about bento grids, even though they look great on desktop, is on mobile, they're still obviously stacked up and down. So, and mobile is a huge percentage of website visitors nowadays. So, I mean, even if you use bento grids, they're not going to be relevant on mobile at all. Um, the other thing we want to highlight is actually case studies. Remember when we highlighted, like, let's say the social proof at the top, 
that is okay to a certain extent but when you talk about case studies as to how for example different individuals in the market are actually using your product or service they go much deeper than simple testimonials by showing how your product actually fuels real world success and they actually make them really effective so in order to make this effective you obviously have to talk about the specific problem that you're solving for that client how they used your solution and the results that they've achieved Obviously, men, try to mention as big brands as possible. So mentioning companies like Spotify or Airbnb adds legitimacy. Though obviously you may not have them. So if you don't have them, you have smaller clients, but you actually have a good stud case study. That's fine for starters. But as soon as you actually start getting larger brands, obviously include those here. <clears throat> If possible, you can obviously have short videos uh, from the case studies themselves that are actually shown side by side, which talk about that particular problem. And then if a person wants to read more, they can. Videos actually are a lot more engaging than text. The other thing that we can actually do is we can also focus on testimonials. So testimonials are great for uh, basically creating that emotional connection. Uh, it also makes them really impactful. So in order to make them impactful, you also have to be specific as to what exactly is highlighted in that particular testimonial. So for example, <clears throat> instead of just saying, this tool was great or something along those lines, or instead of highlighting that particular term, you have to highlight metrics and you have to highlight KPIs or actual results. So instead of just saying this tool was great, or instead of saying, let's say for a freelancer's landing page, having a testimonial, hey, working with Asad was great or something along those lines, you're going to highlight how Asad actually doubled our productivity within the three months of using of being with him or something along those lines. And very similarly with the product, if a person is using a product management product or they're giving a testimonial for that, it's gonna they're gonna talk about how our team doubled productivity within the three months of using this particular product or something along those lines. The other thing that we wanna talk about with testimonials is if you have a video or if you have video testimonials, those are extremely beneficial and much more um, important than text testimonials. So, if you can even avoid text testimonials, if you have just three video testimonials, I think that's sufficient. But if you don't have them, and if you just have like one video testimonial, having one video testimonial at the top and then having some text testimonials at the bottom is fine as well. For the text testimonial, having the person's image is really important. Do not ever just do a text testimonial without an actual real person and his name and his title. So definitely go ahead and do that and ideally include different types of testimonials that talk about different benefits of that particular thing. So obviously that further uh, talks to a wide variety of people coming to your particular landing page, which may have different problems and they can actually see relevant testimonials for the different types of problems that they have. <clears throat> Apologies, my throat is very sore. Now talk about, let's talk about the pricing section. Now obviously you may include a pricing section or you may not include it and it can be on a separate page as well, but if it's on the same page, that's fine too. Now the pricing, uh, section isn't just about numbers obviously it's helping users choose and make that decision so you obviously have to optimize it so first of all you obviously make sure that all of the different programs that you have are there listed it doesn't necessarily need to be a lot of details because sometimes like larger products like let's say jira or asana or slack or mattermost they have a lot of details in their pricing so obviously a person can go to a separate page to see them but high level you have to highlight what is the best option and what's the most popular one that we actually want to nudge users towards to help them make that decision that's that they can actually get the most value out of and you also have to break down the higher level values like for example a bunch of bullet points and features that they actually get um, with this particular thing and you can also highlight, let's say, your free tiers as well or free trials as well to obviously onboard users if there's a barrier to entry. Uh, if the price is huge, you can offer them a weekly trial or something along those lines. And you can actually reinforce a guarantee as well, like if you actually offer that. So if you offer refunds or guarantee, you can actually mention them directly here in the pricing section as well. You can also add an FAQ. An FAQ, again, is not necessary <clears throat> for most, for a lot of products. It can be necessary for some products but not for all. So an FAQ section can obviously include things like, okay, what some of the questions that we basically listed here. I mean, this is pretty simple uh, and it's not always necessary. After that, we can close with a footer. Now footer is the last thing that users see, but it actually is something that users may actually jump to quite again and again, because it actually allows you to have a lot more links in there. Like for example, contact, support, terms of service, privacy and conditions, 
because those are things that people actually want to talk about or want to know before they actually make a purchase as well but they're not always necessary so this is your place to actually go ahead and add a bunch of those additional details that can help people make that decision but are not always relevant for your uh, primary user base if it is actually relevant then i would definitely recommend including in it in the header as well like for example if terms of service is something that most of your users are concerned about when they actually um, are buying this particular type of product because let's say security related and most of your customers are let's say uh, related to the government or something along those lines then definitely including that at the top as well and having it accessible is great but again your important links go here your logo goes here your obviously social proofs can actually go here as well and you can also have a cta if you actually want to but if your header is floating which i actually recommend have a floating header so your cta can actually always be visible at the top as well <clears throat> here i talk about basically the structure that you need to create a high converting landing page now remember the key is to think about your user's journey address their pain points build trust with social proof also make it easy for them to act address some of their common problems and concerns as well if you can do that in the feature section that's great if not create a separate section like the feature section to basically highlight that so yeah that's pretty much it. if you found this video useful make sure to like subscribe and share it with someone who actually needs to improve their landing page i'm actually thinking of doing a whole playlist now that i've actually shown you what a structure what the structure looks like obviously there are huge insights on what you can do in each section like the hero section both visually and how to improve conversions on that as well so we can actually take this forward if there is interest to talk about each section individually at least the larger ones and see how we actually want to go about it so that's pretty much it take care bye